So I guess we'll look at John 17, 3, right? Because I'm curious to see how you guys answer that one. And we could go um, to it unless you know it. That's a that's a Trinitarian, that's a Trinitarian killer right there. It's over. I'll go to it. Know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent, it's over. And this is life eternal that they might know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Mm -hmm. So when I read it, right, I see a dis Jesus making a distinction, right, with the only true God and Jesus Christ. Right. So mm -hmm. when I read that, I see a distinction between Jesus and the and the true God. So okay. When you read it. What do you see? Um, I see a distinction in persons where Christ is acknowledging and glorifying God the Father as the only true God, uh, not a negation of himself, since he, in the same context, talks about how he has all authority, gives eternal life, and has had glory with the Father before the world even existed. And so, um, and puts himself in the same equation as the Father when it comes to salvation. So all of this would be blasphemous statements if Jesus is not God and just a creature um, that God created uh, for him to be claiming these things about himself. So um, saying that, that uh, acknowledging that the Father is the only true God, which he is, um, but not, uh, he doesn't say only the Father is the only true God. It's not a, a statement of negation of himself or the Holy Spirit. Uh, otherwise, we would have problems elsewhere when we go in the Bible like, if we go to Jude, for example, like that's a with this type of interpretation, then you would have to say that Jesus is the only master and Lord, you know, excluding that, the father. That, that's what I well, I wouldn't necessarily say excluding the father, but that's pretty much what I hold to. I hold to that Jesus is Lord only Christ. Uh, well, only in comparison to what right? it just it just simply says he's the only Lord and a master. He's our only Lord and master. Well, it makes, that, me, think of, it makes yeah. me think of what Paul says, right? He, he says we have one God, the Father, and one Lord, uh, Jesus. Uh, right. So think, notice how he says there's Paul, one God, the Father, one Lord, Jesus Christ. Is, does that exclude the Father from being Lord, from being Lord also? From being Lord also? Mm-hmm. In a sense, you cannot, sense. you can't say that, bro. That's that's freaking blasphemy. Is I, I, well, I, I, I have just, to send somebody to commit jihad on you, just, man. He's still God and he's still over his son. Is he Lord? You got to define the word. <laughs> the word is Lord. Is he Lord or not? I, well, we can't just say, oh, he's Lord and yeah. then not but actually what? define what that word means. Because here's yeah. the thing the scripture it, does say, the scripture does say we have one Lord who is Jesus. And it doesn't apply that one Lord. He doesn't say afterwards that Lord is also God or that Lord is also the father. He makes the person after Lord clearly wow. it is referring to Jesus of Nazareth. Dylan, that is tough, right? Go, go ahead. Uh, that's what the Lord. Says. And no, Hunter, it, 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 I'm, I'm show you how, we're going to show you how that's a, wow. How that's a problem. Go ahead, Hunter. Yeah. Cause whenever it talks about, and there is one Lord, Jesus Christ, it's, I mean, no matter what, it, it in the context is referring to only one Lord, um, in any way, shape, or matter. There's only one, just like how there is only one God, and that's the Father. So, with the text, we would have to say that the Father is not Lord, according to the text, because there's because there's only one Lord, and that is Jesus Christ. The Father can't be counted as Lord, and the, which is where he's leaning to. But but yeah, is that, that a problem? Such blasphemy. But is it a problem if the Father is still God? It's a uh, problem yeah. if the father's not Lord. Yes, that is yeah, a problem because if, he, if he's God. Well, oh, Jesus. But still, but hold on. Well, like for example, in the Old Testament, what is the God of Israel called? Lord. That's fair. That's why I actually have to like define that word Lord, how it's being used, right? Because the Bible says no. there are words many, gods many. Oh, no, but hold on. You? But it. Well, no, so go, ahead, go ahead. Sorry. So if it says no, there are lords many that, gods, that's many. so called. It's so called. It says there are so called, not that they're actual would, gods and actual lords. They're so called. But the, but the word is still being referred for that person. That but person it's, but he says so called. He says this. He says there are many 
so-called lords and so-called gods. He literally says that in the text. So, all right, then we'll look at Psalm 82, right? How it says, ye are gods as children of the Most High, mm -hmm. right? Is, is that an incorrect translation? Is it wrong to say that we are gods as children of the Most High? No, well, no, that's actually not as referring to, by the way. Exactly. Um, no. It's not referring to people as gods. As a matter of fact, Psalm 89 is referring to the divine council, which is actually fallen or pretty much it's hostile creatures. So pretty much you could say demons that portray to be like gods um, ha that go into the world and corrupted the other places and lands <laughs> and things like that. These are false gods. Um, and it even talks about in Psalm 82, like you like men will perish. So there's a distinction that showing that it's not men, but like men, they will perish. So it's not talking about humans. Uh, Jesus is not saying to the Pharisees, does, when he quotes, does it not say you are gods? He's not saying that you are gods either. He's quoting Psalm 82, referring to the sons of God yeah, that I'm, became hostile towards Jesus. In Psalm 82, 6, right? Mm -hmm. Looking at exactly. Verse, which we can go to. Well, I, I, don't, I don't want us to jump too far, guys, because I want us to focus on whether or not <laughs> whether or not the father is lord also that's 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 I just my to make simple that question but if jesus were given all power and authority by the father right mm -hmm. jesus but, is now and, and we see in revelation jesus is considered almighty right that well, he's is, considered yeah. almighty beforehand as well but you know. because i was going to ask by what means <laughs> does he have all authority because i mean all authority and I mean, all authorities is also given to the father as well in the sense that he's like no. the authority is the authority is his. The authority has always been his like his authority has so always. So he wasn't he was never given it. He just had it. again. That's why it depends on by what means, because by the means of the son, he could have gotten that from his divinity in the flesh. By what <laughs> means is the question? Oh, because the father we get like, for example, I give God the authority over my life. Right. And when I give my life to him, God is now the authority of my life. It will, you know, in that aspect. So by what aspect is ultimately that question. But going back to what Avery's talking about, according to that text, I can say what if there, well, but according to that text, if there is one God, the father and so there is a continual um, word being used there continually saying and one lord jesus christ so the one lord jesus christ is used in the same type of context that it's being used for god as the father so you can't just say one is without the other one is god one is lord it can't like according to your logic it can't be both yeah i wouldn't necessarily say it's being used in the same sort of context i think paul's showing us this divine high uh, hierarchy that we answer to right because for example, uh, the head of woman is man. The head of man is Christ. It's another and verse that has Christ nothing to do with this context, Dylan. No, listen, but the yeah, but Dylan, when uh, it comes to this verse, though, um, mm -hmm. when you said that there is but one God and that excludes Jesus Christ, it says there is but one Lord. Does that exclude the Father? I I, I would believe so. Wow. So then Paul is contradicting Jesus when Jesus says in Luke, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. No, I don't believe so. It's Paul oh. contradicting Isaiah in Isaiah 43, no, sorry, 45, verse 5, where it says, I am the Lord and there is no other besides me. There is no God. I will gird you through. You have not known me. Or though you have not known me. So in Isaiah, yeah. Yahweh declares that he is the Lord. But you're saying he's <laughs> not? Uh, I, I agree with exactly what that verse says. But I, I, you have to answer a question first. You said Yahweh says that. Who, who is Yahweh? Is that? So who's speaking? God of Israel. It, yeah, but is that the father speaking or the son speaking? Oh, according to Trinitarians, it would be the Son. Yeah, because would, John one eighteen, because John, John one eighteen states that no one has ever seen God, but the unique God, the Monogenos Theos, has made the Father known. So, 
that's where the context like for example you have where like the the historical uh tradition is is that the believers the first believers of jesus were followers of the way and what they believed is that jesus was that so-called second power of heaven the visible yahweh who came down to earth and that's why they believed who he said he was and that's why they believed he was the true <laughs> messiah and all the things that followed in christianity so, but, so here, yeah go ahead so, so here's my problem with that right so you say that when yahweh is speaking in the old testament it's the son who's speaking so would you say the son is the god of abraham isaac and jacob yes but peter says it's the father the father is also the god of abraham isaac and jacob but you said it was the like son. Who, like is it who both is okay Christ? yes it's and, Actually, it, and it's the holy spirit yeah. as well it's all three persons man and that's, that's what the trinity gods. is but that's no, all no 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 here no I'll, he's I'll, missing I'll the up. essence Hold on. Yeah, let me um let me pull this up real quick. Can you um? But then, then he actually, he still has to he still guys he still has to deal with whether or not mm -hmm. the father excluded his lord. Like, please make him deal with that. Why well, actually oh. define that word lord in the New Testament? It's it's it's, it's very it's very simple, bro. It's either the father is lord or he's not. Was Jesus wrong when he said, "Thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth"? Was he wrong for calling him Lord? I don't believe he was wrong. And, okay. I built, and Jesus said, and the time that he said to us that he was given all power and authority in heaven and on earth, he said that after his resurrection. So and I then think that has something to do with okay. at that point in time when he was raised in the dead. Mm -hmm. That's when he was given all the power and then he ascended to the father. He, gave, he was given authority. However, now, does that now exclude is the did the father give up his lordship at that point? Did he stop being lord? And gave it to his son. Did I he mean, stop it, being Lord? It would he he gave lordship to his son. That lines up with scripture. But does he stop being Lord? He's God, bro. Does he stop being Lord? The, the son is Lord. So does yes, the father can... stop being Lord. Yeah, he, he doesn't retain no nope. position anymore. Wow. Yo, that's tough. I, well, that goes so, that goes so, against that goes against where Jesus talks about the Father, Lord is heaven is tough. Lord over heaven and the earth. But he says that before his resurrection. Do you hear what you're saying, bro? I do. Yeah. When is John John 17, bro? Can, can you show me? Can you show me a text that says that where it says that he's uh, the Father is not Lord anymore? I gave it to you, and you guys didn't. You guys yeah, had it. It was what? Of it. It was a. Uh, it was in, in Paul's writing when he says there is one uh, one God who is the Father and one Lord who is Jesus Christ. That, he, that's, I, not him, that, that's not him saying that the Father is not Lord. He's saying the Father is God, bro, and he's saying Jesus is Lord. So there's two different titles, God and Lord, and he's applying the that title of God to the Father and Lord to Jesus. So, and so, so Paul, like again, Paul contradicts Jesus. Where Jesus says the Father is the Lord of heaven and earth. But that's before. according to your theology, Paul is saying that Jesus is Lord, the only Lord, excluding the Father. The Father is only God, he's not Lord. Jesus is Lord and not God. That's your theology. It, why is Doesn't that it kind of uh, mutilate the Shema too? Oh man. The Shema. That goes in. That hey, goes Dylan, into, let's try another thing. Let's that, try that actually goes into what um, the screen that I'm sharing right now. Prophet's I have a little slide. A it's a quick question. Yeah. Dylan, when you see this, what do you see? Tr truly? Heresy. <clears throat> sure. Call it heresy. But how would you... What the, what message what what heresy message does this portray? I when I look at this that the Father is not the Son and that they're both Yahweh, I mm -hmm. see, and I, I assume this is what Trinitarians believe, and they'd also put the Holy Ghost in this, right? And they say that all three are Yahweh, but none of them are each other, right? Is that the Trinity? Is that correct? Um, yeah. So I'm just asking you, what yeah, do yeah. you see from this? Uh, I see God not being a person right let's say yeah i see them making yahweh here who is not a person but instead some sort of like substance 
that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is made of. So God is no longer a person, but a substance. That's what mm -hmm. I see. When I look at that. What the? Yeah. So uh, how do you define substance? It would be like saying no, God. Before we go, before we go too deep into all of that, I, I'm still stuck on this Lord stuff, man. But I like I really yes, want to focus on this. That, okay. Sure. Fair. Um. So 100 brought up a beautiful verse. Revelation chapter 21, verse uh, verse 22. I'll go to it. I'll put it on the screen, too. That's after the resurrection, right? Yes. It says, and I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. Who's the Lord here? Uh, the Lord God would be the Father. So the Father is Lord. If if that's how we're, again, this is we have to define that word, Lord. No, it just it's either He's Lord or He's not, bro. Kyrios. It's the same Lord that's used for the same Lord in First Corinthians. So is the Father Lord? Just hold on. Just let him soak yeah, it for a let, second. Let me think. Let me think this through, yeah. because if I say he's Lord, then I have two Lords, Left. which would be the Father and the Son. So just try to see it from my perspective. Not necessarily. Boom! Boom, ba -da, boom, boom, boom! Is, was that a gotcha moment? No, it's not a gotcha. It's a you're getting it moment. I don't do gotcha moments. I like I like for I people see. to get it. Like, I want I want people to have the truth. You feel me? I know, but the problem yeah, with that, and Dylan, problem, it's... it's Go ahead. Gotcha. It's a, you get it. The problem with me saying, okay, God is Lord also. Now I have a problem here because I got to look at Paul's writing. I had to be like, why is he telling me there's one God who is the Father and that he's saying there's only one Lord who is Jesus? And then and you I know what else? problem with Paul. It, yeah, well, no. What you're going to have to, what you're going to have a problem with, Dylan, is your theology. This does not work under Unitarian theology. It only works in Trinitarian theology. But as long as you are a Unitarian, bro, as long as you're a Unitarian, you will have a problem with the text, with the scripture, because it no, works no. against you. No, I, I confess that even if you're in the truth or not in the truth, you're going to eventually come across roadblocks, whether it's because of a certain translation or maybe it's just because you don't have full understanding of, of what's being written down in that particular chapter. Like for this example, um, in this example, right, Revelation 21, 22. Right, I see the Lord God Almighty, and I assume in some translations it would have Lord fully capitalized. We see that in some of the translations, right? It's capital L O R D, which signifies a difference, right? Like uh, there's a scripture in the Psalm, right? The Lord said unto my Lord, and then you see that the first Lord is fully capitalized, L O R D, and then the second Lord, it just has the capital L, right? So it's signifying that these are sort of two different words. And again, this just goes into how exactly we're defining that word, right? So when I see Lord, um, when I say Jesus is Lord, that means Jesus is ruler. When I say that God is uh, God is the Father, that word God, from my understanding, the way I've, I've understood it is it means creator. No, but look, look, look. I, I, I well, I mean, if you mean creator, then Jesus is God. Then by that standard, because he, I, I disagree with that. So. Well, well, okay. Thanks so literally, lit literally in the verse that you quoted, it says, "For unto us there is one God from whom are all things, and one Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. through whom are all things." Yeah. So I Paul agree. literally attributes creation to both the Father and the Son. Yeah, but he doesn't say Jesus is the creator. He said everything oh, is created. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't say the Father is the creator in that no, verse. He did. Uh, okay. Uh, he doesn't we'll, actually. We'll, we'll, we'll get to, we'll we'll get to that in a second, man. Because I, I I will I we we're I'm stuck here. So, you said well, Lord is ruler. So is the Father the ruler? Is the Father the Lord? Um, is the Father the Lord? The Father is God. At this present moment, the Father is God. All right. Who is the, the Lord here in this moment. verse? So, this that means, verse right here, so that means the Lord the Lord here the Lord God Almighty is Jesus. Well, I'd have to read Revel. I'd have to read the full chapter, man. Because do you really I'm have not, to read the? Do you, who's the Lamb? Who's I mean, the bro, lamb? the Lamb is Jesus. But All the right, so who's the Lord God Almighty, bro? The Father. 
Thank you. So the, the father is the Lord, right? The ruler. Yeah, but dude, this is 20. This is not the 20, uh, 22nd verse, 21st chapter. There's a bunch that was said before this. I need to understand when exactly this is. This is a. Uh, it's happening after stuff. Jesus' resurrection. Not. Even looking at the verses right before it, I see that he's talking about New Jerusalem, the holy city. So, so what? this is what so this is after the resurrection. This is once we're in heaven, and this is when uh the son gives the kingdom back to the father. Wait, wait, now, wait. So now are you saying that hmm. right now are you saying that Jesus now gives up lordship? He doesn't he's not lord. There's a there's a this, point where he stops being lord too. Yes, because the son gives back show up. me that, bro. Show me in the show me show me in the text, show me a single Bible verse. That suggests that the son is no longer Lord. That's why I want to see that. I don't want to see. I, I don't. I know. I want to see a verse that says Jesus is not Lord anymore. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. It's in First Corinthians, uh, chapter fifteen. All right. I hope that it says that Jesus is not Lord anymore. Not that he gives the kingdom over to the Father. But that's what. It but means. that he's not Lord anymore. But that's what it means. No, that's not it what doesn't. it means. If, if he gets like, back, literally, on, Dylan, this is bad, bro. No, this, this is this is this is what I'm out. saying. Just hear what I'm saying, Avery. If he gives really the bad. kingdom, if he gives the kingdom back <clears throat> to his father, now his father is ruler over it because he gave the kingdom over to his father. So now his his father is the Lord God. Yes. Uh -huh. You, wow. but you let's, hold on, let, hold on. let's observe the text exactly for what it says and not add anything into it Wait. and i saw no temple in the city for its temple is the lord god the almighty and the lamb Ooh. nowhere in this text does it say that the lordship was given over to the father you have to show a verse that actually show explains that okay. otherwise you have to otherwise you have to make it up from somewhere how about, how, about we, how about we did it? Wait, how about so, how about we did it? Hold on. How about how about we did it here? He who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. This is even this is at the end. Yeah, no, this is at this the is end. After, Kingdom after, given to the Father and everything. Yeah. No, no, that's not. No, it's not. This is after this is after the angel. Gave John the revelation, right? Once that revelation's finished, and then John goes to, to bow down and worship the angels, say, hey, stop, don't worship me. I'm a fellow servant just like you. So the revelation is pretty much finished. This is in the very next chapter after we have just seen that yes. the Father is called Read Lord. The chapter, bro. Read the chapter. In the very next chapter, my friend, in the very next chapter, you have Jesus still being identified as the Lord. It's God.